Speaker version 16.1, Project Purple Haze. Although I should have called this one Project Purple Storm as much as it fought me. We'll talk about that more later. It's very similar to version 16 being a derivative of it. The main difference here is the suspension. I used a 3D printed mold to cast a two-part rubber compound. These molds were aligned with semispheres and drafted sides, which were then clamped together. A two-part urethane rubber was then injected into the top with a plastic syringe through the hole, pushing air and excess urethane out the other three vent holes. After curing, the molds were separated, and the clean injection molded part was able to be released, leaving a perfect replica of the 3D printed suspension part that was used in version 16. This two-part urethane material is about the shore hardness of 60A, which is much softer than most TPUs that are available for FDM-style machines. Here's another render of how the surround is supposed to have worked. Keywords here being supposed to have. These two part molds were printed with PETG at a layer height of 0.12 millimeters to reduce the steps in the curvature of the suspension parts, hopefully leading to a cleaner part and easier release. This, however, was not the case. Fundamentally though, this speaker is the exact same as version 16. The cone, baskets, frame, former, coil, and motor are identical to version 16, with the motor being pulled directly from version 16, utilizing the same ceramic magnets and underhung design. The only real difference here is the suspension stiffness, as it's even the same 3D shape, just a different material. Now on to the problems of this build, starting with the voice coil dilemmas. As of now, the speaker has eight five voice coils, all of them shown here. I found the culprit to this as well. It has to do with the way the motor was constructed. As the coils were all being pinched and ground away, this top pole plate is the voice coil killer. It would shift to the side and slowly pinch or crush the coil. It's strange though, since it's a through hole connected with the bolt to the bottom plate, meaning the whole pole and bottom plate would have to sh have shifted, which upon further investigation is exactly what was happening. The bottom printed piece was not strong enough to retain the bottom plate in place as it would flex enough to let the bottom pole tilt sideways. The remedy to this was to fix the bottom plate in place. Using this much stouter 3D printed aligner, it would align the plate and magnets around the same axis and then allow me to use a lightweight CA glue to fix the plate in place and then remove the aligner. This, however, was not the only issue on this build. I struggled with the molds and demolding as it was my first time using them. I failed to use the appropriate release agent and it led to the molds locking themselves together with the layer lines. No amount of force, prying, beating, chiseling, heating would break them loose. I ended up destroying the first set of molds completely without recovering the parts, making them a complete loss. I then reprinted the molds to try again. This time I sanded with 600 grit and then clear coated them, sanding with 1000 grit in between the three coats. After curing for 24 hours, I applied carnauba wax to them as a release agent as I couldn't source PVA locally and I got a patient waiting on delivery. I then reassembled the molds and mixed up another batch of two part urethane, leading to the last problem. The mold design didn't let all the air bubbles release properly, leading to a Swiss cheese surround. Although this project was full of problems, it was a great project that taught me a lot about what works and what doesn't. But now we're going to move on to the sponsor and then follow it with a build lapse and play test. I'll also put a speaker recording on the screen for those that have asked. Today's sponsor is PCBWay, a top provider of custom PCB services. PCBWay caters to both hobbyists and professionals, offering high quality, cost effective PCB manufacturing and assembly. With their fast turnaround times and amazing customer support, PCBWay helps ensure your projects succeed. Visit PCBWay.com to claim your free prototype order and kickstart your project today.
front of us is the graph for version 16 and 16.1. Looking at this graph shows an improvement over a majority of the low end all the way up to 1000 Hz with the urethane surrounds as compared to the printed surrounds in the near field. It also produced a slower taper at the end of the spectrum as compared to its predecessor. Overall loudness is up by about 6 decibels as all my measurements are taken with half a volt at the speaker from pink noise to give a fair comparison of power to sound. I'm quite pleased with the performance of the speaker, however due to the motor construction and the suspension that was too flexible and it led to rubbing in the horizontal position, I feel it will get a redesign next time. It was really nice though to see a printed versus molded comparison where everything in the entire speaker remained the same. So that is all that I have for now. Uh, until next time guys, thanks for watching.